Good morning. It is Monday the 16th of January. It is 24 minutes past nine, which is a little bit later than I thought it was. Um, and I'm off on a walk to get some milk for breakfast because um, I ran out. And I realized how much I'd missed. Um, oh, it's also snowing today. Well, it has snowed. There's snow on the ground. And I realized how much I'd missed um, walking in the mornings since December. I think there's such a build up to Christmas. Well, actually, the worst part, or the equally as bad part of the dark mornings and dark evenings in general, kind of gloominess, continues into January. So I'm off on a walk again, and I think I might restart it as a sort of winter practice rather than just an advent practice. Good morning, it's Tuesday the 17th of January and it's an hour earlier than it was yesterday. It's 8.30. Um, I actually got up at 7 o'clock this morning, which I'm pretty chuffed about because I've been really struggling to kind of maintain a regular early morning wake-up schedule since Christmas and New Year's and all of the upheaval of that. Um, and also the fact that it's just so, so dark in the evenings and in the mornings and I just want to sleep forever um, but I got up this morning and showered and I even refreshed my hair so I, I ended up taking my walk halfway through hair, hair blow drying and went to the park and read my book uh, and something very spicy happened I'm really enjoying uh, reading fun books and listening to fun audiobooks at the moment uh, and by fun I mean <laughs> romantic comedy and or kind of the book that I'm reading at the moment is a Jodie Pico book uh, who is one of my favourite authors when I was like a tween uh, so it's fun to revisit her but this is her kind of new novel about the pandemic and it's very cheesy and probably there's a lot that I could say about it critically but I don't want to, I want to just just enjoy it Hello, it's now just quarter past one um, and I'm having a bit of a slow day. I am hopefully starting a new job next week um, and when I start that new job I will be working on Tuesdays um, and so I think I'm kind of already in the mindset of having that as the structure of my week so it feels weird to have a Tuesday and I'm not doing anything which is not that weird in the context of what my last few weeks have been like. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just not quite in the right rhythm uh, yet, which I can imagine is a pretty common experience with people uh, when they're in between jobs. So anyway, all that to say, <laughs> uh, I'm struggling a little bit to get kind of started and to do some stuff today. So I thought I would show you the projects that I'm working on. Um, not necessarily that I've been working on today, one of them I have been working on today, but just the things that I've been working on over the past few weeks. Um, I'm wearing a jumper. Let's see if I can make it a bit bigger. I'm wearing this cardigan. Um, that I was my Christmas Eve cast on. Um, and it's the Valkyria cardigan uh, by a, I want to say Swedish designer, um, but I'll pop it down below. Um, and I cast this off on the 2nd of January, um, or the 3rd of January or something. I had hoped to kind of have it from like Christmas Eve to New Year's because I thought that would be a really nice kind of symmetry, but alas, that didn't happen. Um, but I really like it. Uh, it's knit in my Perfection Mohair from Needle and Fred uh, that I got at the Perth Yarn Festival, now the Scottish Yarn Festival or the Yarn Festival of Scotland or something, um, held with some, I'm trying to remember what the colourway was called, held with a yarn from Fly Dyed in the colourway Gentrified Green Spaces. So it's kind of green with the occasional like grey or like concrete 
grey colour in it. Um, and I only had two skeins of each, so I had to knit it quite smaller than what would be the size uh, that I would make for the recommended ease. So this has like negative ease on me. As you can see, it's quite like, has to stretch around. Um, I can do it all the way up and it, but it's very fitted. Whereas the recommended ease is like two centimeters, no, five centimeters expanded. What's the word? Positive ease. And I really enjoyed making it, so I'm making another one in the right, right size slash gauge. The other thing was that I did not get gauge at all. Um, I think the gauge for the pattern is like 16 stitches for four, four inches on four millimeter needles, which is like, I usually get like 18, 19, 20 stitches on four millimeter needles. So, yeah, that was just not happening for me. Um, this is my second one. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to make another one. And as you'll, if you've seen my things I knit in 2022 video, um, you'll see that there's a cardigan that I made last year that I never wear that I wanted to rip out and make into another cardigan. This one specifically. I had thought that I might get closer to gauge with this because it's quite a like fluffy alpaca. But, um, and I have got closer. I think my stitches are slightly, slight, ever so slightly larger, but I also made the decision to knit the pattern in two sizes larger than um, what I would knit if I had gauge, if that makes sense. So I'm hoping that it will come out with the kind of oversized, big puffy sleeve look that is, um, that's in the pattern photos. I do still like the kind of slight balloon sleeve on this, and as you can see, they're quite short. I like a short sleeve because I like to have my wrists free of dangly things so I can knit and wash up and play piano and whatever, um, wave my hands around, <laughs> it doesn't get in the way. Um, but this is a little short even for me, but I had this much yarn left, so. That's the way that it was. But with this, I have quite a lot of yarn if I can properly unravel all the sweaters. So far, I've only been able to unravel the sleeves of the cardigan uh, that this yarn was before. Now, this yarn has been like four different projects, so I'm starting to think it's slightly cursed. But we plow on. So I'm making a second Valkyria cardigan. I'm just on the raglan increases at the moment. So it's very simple. Um, it's worked back and forth. It's a really lovely pattern. Um, and yeah, I think I've got about 10 repeats to go. So like 10, it's like 20 rows until I divide for the sleeves. Um, and that's how much I have for the first ball. This is what I unraveled from the first sleeve. So I'm confident that I will have enough yarn to make that properly. The other project on my needles at the moment is a project that I've been working on a lot over December and I've been keeping kind of secret um, because it's a present for my dad who watches the podcast um, but he picked the colour, he picked the pattern, he knows that it's happening, it's not like a secret surprise but I didn't want to put too much in the video but I have been sending him photo updates of how it's been going because I am almost finished. Um, this is probably one of the biggest things I've ever made. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I've definitely made shawls that have like more stitches that are like bigger. So like the biggest sweater that I've ever made. It's possibly a similar size to the like very first jumper that I ever made, which was a one size fits all pattern. Big air quotes there. Um, but it was a huge, <laughs> like I ended up with a very big sweater. It's so big that I like don't really wear it. Um, in fact, I'm not actually 100% sure where it is. I think it's like vacuum sealed under my bed at the moment. Anyway, um, but this is the brownstone pullover and <laughs> it's just so large um, by, it's a Brooklyn tweed pattern, but I can't remember who it's by. Um, and I'm literally just working on the final section. Um, I cast on for the collar 
or I like picked up stitches for the collar this morning um, and I've got some way so I'm excited about that um it's like a car it's not a cardigan it's like a sweater but then it has a shawl collar that goes all the way around and kind of hits quite low and then has little closures um so yeah but when I finish that I'm finished well I've got to make the toggles I've got to make the like twists for the toggles um yeah but they the pattern recommended that you block the jumper before picking up the stitches so that's what I've done so it's even like it's blocked <laughs> it's like it's finished so I'm pretty excited about that I cast this on at the beginning of December um and yeah it's my goal is to finish it by the end of January and I think I think we're gonna do it I'm gonna hit that goal. Something else I'd like to finish before the end of January is this jumper, uh, which is the Ayla sweater from Pom Pom's Ready Set Raglan. And if you're a follower of the pod, you'll have seen this many, 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 many times because I've been knitting it forever. Um, and I recently picked it up again as part of my kind of, I did some reflections and wrote down nine projects that I really want to finish by the end of 2023 like long standing whips that I'm just like no you're getting done and I've already finished one of them uh which was a pair of calico socks uh which I forgot to take any footage of and I'm giving as a gift so they're now wrapped up so I'm sorry but they're they're just calico they're the calico socks I've shown them before in the pod um they're very nice and I finished them check that's one of my nine done and then the brownstone is another one and then this jumper is another one. So I just have to finish this sleeve. And let's compare it to the finished sleeve. Oh, I lost the ball before. I've got about this much to go. And I picked that back up maybe on like Saturday or Friday or Saturday. Um, so yeah, that's close. And then this also I have to pick up and do the collar and sew in all the ends. Uh, but other than that, that is almost finished and that is also a gift. So my goal is to finish these by, my goal was to finish them by the end of like the first three months of the year, but now I think my goal is to finish them before January, the end of January. Um, which is why I don't share my knitting goals on the internet because I like to change them. So anyway, that was just going to be a really quick update and it's turned into a little 10 minute spiel. Um, so I think I'm going to go and eat a cream egg now because <laughs> it's cream egg season almost. Um, I don't, I might eat a cream egg, who knows? Uh, and then I think I'm going to go outside and just go for a wonder. I need to go to Boots to buy some like toiletry stuff. So that might be my adventure of the day. And then I meet out with some friends in the evening. So I will see you later. So long. Wednesday the 18th of January and it's just gone 11 um, and I'm about to head out to do some errands um, I had a clothing swap clothing drive at my house before Christmas um, and along with a lot of my own stuff that I contributed I also gathered a few things from some other people who came and swapped stuff um, and I'm taking all the extras today to a local queer cafe that is having a free clothing shop and is taking donations today so that will clear out some space in my house and I feel like that task is completed and provide some clothes hopefully for people who actually use them um, and I was just getting ready to go and I wanted to check in with the mini vlog and also show you this uh, this is my Sophie scarf uh, quite a popular pattern at the moment I'll link it below um, I thought it was free, like it's so simple that I thought it would be free, but it's, it's not free. I guess that makes sense, pattern designers need to make money. Um, so anyway, I paid for it and I made it. Um, and 
the clever, the clever among you, the dutiful watchers among you might recognize this yarn from a pair of socks that I made last year um, and included in my wrap up just so that I could rip them out because <laughs> um, I never wear them. Whereas this I've worn almost every day since I've made it. So I just wanted to show you that. It's very like long and thin and it's all garter stitch and it's got like eye cord around the edge. I love these little like long danglies um, and I just wrap it and tie it once and again. And it's just good for like, especially like bulkier coats where you can't really fit like a big shawl. Um, and I just think these little tassels are so cute. That's maybe not the best tie I've ever done, but it's fine. So I'm gonna head off and do that and I may take some little clips. Oh, also once I have dropped the clothes off, I'm gonna go to some vintage shops uh, that are nearby. <laughs> uh, I may not buy anything, but uh, one of my friends told me that one of them was having a sale, so. It may not still be having a sale, but I'm gonna check that out. It's also like a silly amount of clothes. I have this whole massive backpack full, and then this bag as well. <laughs> I'm taking the bus. I could drive, but I wanna go into shopping after, so I'm gonna take the bus. morning, it's Thursday the 19th of January um, and I'm on a walk. Uh, I'm off to buy more milk because we have a little bit left and I went yesterday to uh, a Sainsbury's, which is a supermarket, where they have American food and I got some fake Lucky Charms and I'm pretty excited to have those for breakfast. Um, I've been finding that having some sort of like little treat in the morning uh, whether that's eating a nice food or um, having a fun food or having a book that I really want to read another chapter of or any whatever's motivating to me in the moment has been really helpful for kind of waking up more like 7 7 30 than like 8 8 30 9 o'clock um, so anyway yeah it's about eight o'clock now and I'm just walking to get some milk. Good morning. It's eleven twenty-four on Friday, the twentieth of January. And I'm out on a walk. It's a gorgeous day today. It's just extremely sunny and the weather is really crisp and cold. It's the sort of day that makes me feel like I should be doing something more with my day, like swimming in the sea or climbing up a mountain or doing some sort of big outdoor activity, um, which I, I may do, 
there's always the possibility of going for a sea swim. I live about a 15 minute cycle away from the sea, but I've not been in a long time. Um, it's probably not that wise to go by yourself. So unless I can drag someone to come with me, I think today's outdoor activity might just be this little walk. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I was supposed to start a new job today and it's been delayed. So I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself and trying to treat myself with a... I had a very slow morning in bed and I finished a new a knitting project. And yeah, now I'm out on my walk. Kinda not sure where it's gonna take me. I've brought my journal and some knitting and just sit in the park or something. But uh yeah, operation feel less sorry for myself is a go. o'clock and my hair is doing something. <laughs> it's I think it's almost nine o'clock. My car thinks that it's nine o'clock because I've not changed the time with the time changes. Um but it's eight fifty eight today. Eight fifty it's not, it's seven fifty eight <laughs> and I'm going to the post office um to collect and just fix this a little bit. There we go. To collect a package that failed to be delivered to my flat yesterday our like main buzzer is broken so it means that any post that arrives unless our front door is like wide open and inviting our like like the door to the building rather than like the front door of our flat um it often means that things don't get delivered which is very frustrating and we are working on fixing it but for now it means if i order something trip to the post office there are ways to get there other than driving um, obviously, uh, but I don't know what I'm going to be collecting and it's quite far, so I'm going to do that. Hello, it is uh, four o'clock on Sunday. Um, I don't think I filmed anything yesterday. Maybe I filmed like a really short clip, which I may or may not have included, um, but I thought I would give you a kind of end of week knitting update to close out this little like mini weekly vlog situation thing and also because I finished a lot of stuff and I'm pretty pleased about it so we're gonna celebrate that. <laughs> First thing that I finished, almost, almost finished, is the brownstone pullover. I finished the collar um, it folds over like this and the thing that it needs to be completely finished is some like toggles to go here and then I think it'll sit a bit better because at the moment it's still sitting a little bit funny and also I've tried it on but I'm not the right shoulder measurement so it's not kind of not sitting right but I'm sure once the toggles are in place that will all sit nicely. You're not getting the most accurate color rendition of this very large jumper. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I knit it in, luckily just had this tanned, uh, in Rennie, I think it's JC. I think it, I did order it from JC Rennie's, but it just says Rennie, I don't know what the difference is. Um, anyway, it's a Scottish yarn and it says chunky, uh, Aran weight, but, I knit this on, I think, four millimeter needles for the body, um, which is quite a tight, quite a tight gauge. Um, but that was the intention was to knit a kind of tight fabric. So yeah, one finished jumper. Um, and yeah, I just need to sort out the toggles and make little like twisty ties to finish that. And then it's, it's all done. So that's good. I finished that maybe like two, three days ago. And then in the same day, I finished the sleeve, the final sleeve on the Ayla jumper, which yeah, was this one. Cause I, I did two different cast offs 
on the sleeves because I did this one like many, many, many months ago and I forgot which cast off I did. And I did this cast off like three different times and none of them were the same and I just, I can't be bothered. The recipient of the jumper will not care. So that's what matters. Um, but I still have the collar to do, but I have now done the collar. And this jumper, another gift. So the brownstone jumper, I think I've already said in this video, but that's a jumper. It's a gift for my dad. And this is a gift for a friend who's been waiting on a jumper for me for almost 10 years. <laughs> so that's a big achievement. And as much as I'm really pleased with how this turned out, and I think the recipient will really love it, I am... Um, and this was knit in um, Cascade 220, which is a yarn that I'm just a bit done with. Um, I've got actually a sweater's quantity of Cascade 220 that I was thinking about earlier today from a Star Crossed by Jackie C. Slack that I was making. And it's like in this purple color that I just don't feel that excited about. I really, really, really want to make like a lilac cardigan because I saw Claire's lilac cardigan on the Pearlwise vlogs and I really want one. Um, either to make the bonnie or the, whatever's the bonnie cardigan in the different size. I think it begins with an A by, I want to say Orlan Souk, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, I was like, oh, maybe I can make it with this purple yarn that I already have, but I just don't like the color. I've been thinking a lot about like colour in my wardrobe and how um, putting more thought into colour and choosing to own things that are in colours that I like and that all work as one palette makes getting dressed in the morning a lot easier. So I'm being wanting to be very conscious about the things that I make and the colours that I make them in. All that to say, I'm done with Cascade 220 and I'm done with this jumper and I'm pleased. I, it's the Ayla pullover from the pom-pom book Ready Set Raglan which is over there um, and I did the colour blocking myself just added a few little stripes here and there and I'm pleased with how it's turned out um, it's not blocked yet so I will block that and then it's done the brownstone pullover is blocked so that's even closer to finish than this one is the other things that I have to show you updates are my second Valkyria cardigan, which I just separated, sorry about all the clanging, just separated for the sleeves. Uh, it's already looking much more kind of true to size, um, which I think I've already explained all of my weird stuff about the sizing with this previously in the video. Um, yeah, it's like a lot of this, it's a lot deeper armholes than the other one not loads deeper but like significantly deeper um and I think still with this yarn like this is just not a yarn that I would choose now to work with it's quite like slippery and like heavy and airy all at the same time it's just not a fabric like I like things that have a lot more like toothiness and are more like woolen woolly than this yarn so I'm still wanting to find a way to use it and I think this is maybe the best way but if this doesn't turn into something that I'm wearing I'm done with this yarn <laughs> I've like I cannot even count the amount of projects that it has been so far um at least four different things that I can think of possibly more so it's either this cardigan or bust that's what's happening there but I'm relatively enjoying knitting on it I'm not like loving it I think I'm gonna get my Marit cardigan out of storage it's up there and I think I'm gonna get it out of storage this evening because I'm feeling very uninspired with all of my knits at the moment um which has been good to like get some stuff finished but I think I need something a bit more engaging and that makes me feel a little bit more productive uh when I'm having time where I can knit the last thing that I wanted to show you is a little sock cast on. I don't think I have any socks on the needles at the moment, so I just wanted to cast a pair on. Um, this is the 100 gram skein that came with my uh, advent calendar from uh, Alternate Universe, and it's all made up of recycled like cone yarn. 
um, and this is the day 18 colorway. Um, I'm guessing that just like every box just got a random one of the days in 100 grams, which I think is kind of fun. Um, I feel like, yeah, it's nice. Like I'm only one of the few people who have this much of this color. Um, and because there's a limited amount, it is 100 grams, but it's quite a like, I don't think there was a yardage. I'm gonna just check the, yeah, I don't think that there was a yardage marked on, so I don't know what the yardage is. Um, but it's quite a like heavy fingering. So in order to make sure that I'm making the most of the yarn, I'm doing a toe up sock, which I don't usually do because I don't like them. <laughs> but this one is okay. Um, this is the Everyday Sock by Andrea Maori, the Tere Renee Knits Everyday Sock, which I've never knit before. Um, so I'm just gonna make this and then knit until I have 50 grams left and 50 grams on the sock, and then I'll cast off and make the second one and hopefully there'll be a decent enough length because I really hate short socks. Um, but yeah, it's just all over ribbed which will hopefully be a good fit. I'm making the ladies, ladies large size, which is the size that corresponds to my shoe size, <laughs> which is a nine UK, if anyone's interested. Um, and it does seem like it might be a bit big. And I wonder if that's because of the slightly heavy nature of the, like it's like a heavier sock yarn. So we'll see. I really don't wanna have to go back and re-knit it. It's a 68 stitches round and I usually knit a 72 stitch sock. So I think it'll be fine once it all just like stretches out. That's my hope. But this is just like to have a sock to be knitting on when sock knitting is required. So yeah, those are all my updates and I'm gonna struggle to get this big cake back in this tiny sock bag. So I'm not gonna do it on camera. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thanks for watching. Um, I will be back maybe next week with some more knitting updates for you, depending on how much I've done, uh, or if anything else interesting happens that I want to film. So thanks for sticking around and I hope you have a lovely, you'd have, well, I have had a lovely weekend. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. Hope you're doing well and see you when I see you. Bye.